All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, unfortunately, we've gotten a lot of rain lately, pretty much three weeks of solid rain. Um, it has completely muddied up my backyard. Um, it's like a swamp back there. I can't even walk back there without slipping and falling. It's that bad. So I haven't been able to get out there and make any videos. I had a bunch of videos planned for you guys. One of the videos, including this uh, Artillian pallet fork frame, this John Deere one here. Um, so that's going to be a really cool video and I plan to do that as soon as things dry up out there So hopefully that'll be soon today We're in the shed to install the original tractor cab back onto the tractor um, Unfortunately, it's that time of year again, um, which is still kind of exciting though Because that means winter plowing and getting out and playing in the snow. So um, it's still kind of exciting as well um, so we're going to be installing the original tractor cab today. Last year, I showed you guys how to put this cab together um, completely from scratch. So I will link that video up here if anybody wants to see it. Um, and then at the end of the season, I showed you guys how to remove it. Um, so this video is going to be showing you guys how to install the cab once it's already been pre-assembled. Um, it's a pretty easy process. There's only like six main parts of the frame here that get tied to the tractor frame itself. And I hold this cab together, so it's pretty easy to do. As far as the wiring goes, I've got everything tied together through this little uh, pigtail here. Um, so I have this other end on the tractor and basically once I got the cab installed, I'm just gonna be plugging this in and that'll run all the power from my tractor to the cab, which will power this panel box up here where you can see all my switches. This is my switch panel box from original tractor cab. So that'll power my wipers, my lights, my cab heater and all that good stuff. Um, so that'll be very simple. Uh, my cab heater is right here on the workbench. I cleaned it up, it was pretty dusty from sitting all summer long. But this is the cab heater. Now this cab heater, a lot of people ask me where I got it. Um, I got it off of Wish.com. So I went on the Wish.com app and that's where I ordered this from. I believe I only paid like 20 bucks for this thing. So it was really, really cheap. And it does work pretty good. It's kind of small, but it needs to be small because there's not a whole lot of room in that cab. Um, but they do have another version of this, which has an extra hole. So it's like three, four inches longer and it's got a little bit bigger radiator in it and it's got an extra exhaust hole as well so that it puts out a little bit more heat. And I think this year I'm probably gonna end up upgrading this to that because um, even though this heater worked really well for the price, I noticed that if it was a really chilly day out and the wind was blowing, it would kind of suck the heat out of the cab. So at some point I would like to upgrade this. So hopefully you guys will see that video in the future. And as far as connecting the heater, uh, my heater hoses are already run on the track from last year and what I did was I just disconnected the heater as the heater was sitting about right here so I disconnected the two lines and I basically just wrapped them up over top of the frame of the tractor here and zip tied them together and I also have a ball valve on the inside of the engine bay that I shut off as well and I did that to keep the hose from leaking so I wouldn't have a massive coolant leak as I was doing side jobs and work in the summer um, I'll show you guys where that's at so that ball valve in here is just you can see it kind of down here that little silver piece right here, that is the handle to it. So when I get the cab heater hooked back up, I will just rotate that valve and open it back up again, and I should be all set. So once I get the cab reinstalled, I will cut these zip ties, um, unwrap these hoses here, we'll throw them back onto the cab heater, tighten up the clamps, and basically open that valve, and we should be back in business. So um, that's how that's going to work. So right now, we are just waiting for my buddy Matt. He just went out to go get some food, so as soon as he gets back, he's going to help me install this cab. We'll go ahead and lift the cab up, throw it on the frame of the tractor, and I will walk you guys through the process of reinstalling this original tractor cab back onto the tractor. You're going to have to drive it real low so we can get some height on this thing. Okay, so as you guys can see, we've got the cab sitting there resting on the uh, main frame here of the tractor. Um, so our first step is going to be uh, removing the two ROPS bolts on each side. So here is the ROPS. There's four bolts, two bolts in the front here and two in the back. So we're just removing these two front bolts. We'll get these off and then these side plates here, these rear mounts, these just pivot down and they'll slide over the studs as you can see there. And we'll just put the nuts, put the lock washers back on there. So we'll do that with each side. And uh, once we get the back all situated and bolted down, we will go ahead and work on the front. All we gotta do is remove these little push clips here and we can go ahead and curl the front of this floor mat over. And once we fold it over, it'll expose the bolt holes that we need to use 
use to mount the two front cab mounts. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the rear first. And as soon as we're done with that, We'll show you guys how to do the front. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the two nuts on these studs for the ROPS. To do that, you're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket. Got it on a 3 8 ratchet here. Okay, now that we got them off of there, you can see we've got the studs exposed. We'll go ahead and slide this rear bracket down over top of the studs like that. And we can go ahead and replace our lock washers and our nuts. And go ahead and tighten them down. Okay, so we got that side done. Okay, now we're on the right side of the tractor. Go ahead and do the same process over here. All right, now we can go ahead and move this mount down like we did the other side. Slide it down over the studs there and get it bolted back in place here. Now on this side here, I can use a ratchet, but on the front side here, you're gonna need a three quarter inch wrench. Now we got a three quarter inch wrench. Go ahead and get this other side tightened down. Alrighty, so now we got the back lower mounts all situated and bolted down. Now we can go ahead and work on the front lower mounts or the front mounts. So as you see here, we've got two holes. Um, these two holes are going to line up with a couple holes that we have in the floor. I believe one of them is going to use this push clip hole right here. Um, so as I said before, we got to go ahead and remove a couple push clips. There's one here, one up front here. Once you get them out, you go ahead and fold the floor mat forward and you can slide the frame underneath the floor mat. Go ahead and get it bolted in with your uh, two quarter inch bolts. Got an 11 millimeter socket on a quarter inch ratchet and 11 millimeter ratchet wrench. And I also got this nifty little push clip tool. It's made by Mac. Um, so it allows me to get right under there and pop them up. All right, so we've got a push clip right here on the end. Go ahead and get that removed. Slide that underneath. And pulls it right up like that. So there's the two. And I think that's it. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to lift up on this frame rail here. And you could do this beforehand, but it's really not that big of a deal. Just kind of pull the frame out of the way here. Then you can curl the floor mat out of your way. Just like so. So now as you can see, there's two holes that are exposed, one here and one here. These are the two holes that we will be using to mount the front frame rails. So go ahead and slide them over the holes there. Grab your quarter by 20 bolts, and you're gonna wanna throw the bolt in facing downward. That way you can put the nut and washer down on the bottom of the floor. That way it doesn't interfere with the floor mat. The same thing with the other side here. We can go ahead and tighten these up. Okay, that's tight. Okay, those are good. Now we can go ahead and roll the floor mat back over top of it. Just like so. And then you're gonna reinsert just one of the push clips. So you're just gonna go ahead and reinsert the front push clip. And that is plenty to hold the floor mat back down nice and tight. So now we can go ahead and move on to the left side and get that done. And then I'll show you guys what the next step is. All right, so we're over at the other side now. Go ahead and get these push clips removed. Fold this back. Bolt strut it in here. Okay, and flip our floor mat back over. Just like so. And then again, reinsert our front push clip. Just like so. And we should be all set with the front mounts. All right, guys, so now we've got the four main mounts connected. We've got both front mounts bolted to the floorboard, and we've got both rear lower mounts um, connected to the ROPS frame there. So it's already sturdying up quite a bit. 
Um, now the last mounts that I like to do, I like to do all four of these first because after that, you've got to connect these upper mounts to the ROPS itself. Um, and you do that by using these little C-clamps that they got. So that bolt will slide through that bracket there and it just basically clamps it right around the ROPS. And the reason you want to do this last is because these can slide up or down because there's a lot of adjustment that you can do on these. And if you put these on first and say you put them too low, um, that's going to pull the whole cab forward. Or if you do it too high, it's going to push the cab backwards. So um, what I like to do is I get all four main mounts done first. That way it kind of centers and aligns the cab where it needs to be. And then the very last thing I do is this, which just kind of ties it all together. And in which case, you know that that clamp is going to be exactly where it needs to be because you got all four lower mounts already connected. So now we're going to go ahead and install these upper mounts. Okay, so as I showed you guys, we got these C-clips. Let's go ahead and pull the bolt out. And these bolts are 11 millimeter, just like the front bolts were. Um, so these are going to slide over the wraps just like that. And then you're going to go ahead and get the cab lined up with the front of the C-clamp. Go ahead and slide your bolt through. And I like to nut mine on the back side here. You can see here it comes out the back. Go ahead and put our nut on. And that's all there is to that. So go ahead and tighten this up and uh, we'll do the other side. And then you guys will be able to see just how sturdy it makes this cab. Okay. Now another thing is if you've already had this cab installed, um, you could also see like a wear mark from where this clamp was before. So if you're worried about exactly where it belongs, you should be able to see some kind of a slight rub mark or fade mark from where this used to be. So go ahead and line it up with that and that'll tell you you're in the right location. And I'll do this other side here. Let's pull that back a little bit. And through there. Now here you guys can see where the, where the clamp previously was. You can see that line right there. So I'm just kind of lining it up with that. Should be the upper edge was lined up with that right there. So I got it where I want it. I'll go ahead and tighten it up. And it should put us right around where we were last year when we first installed it. Okay, now that we've got them on there, you can see just how sturdy this cab is. Shakes the whole tractor. So these upper mounts really make a big difference. Um, stiffen the whole cab up and pretty much make this entire thing one unit. So now we've got all the mounts in place and bolted up. We're going to go ahead and move along to the vinyl. So with the vinyl, we're going to have a couple different things. Um, in the back here, there's some Velcro strapping. As you can see right here, it's like a long strap. And this is going to get wrapped around the ROPS, and that's going to pull this nice and tight. Um, so it basically gets wrapped around and Velcroed, and that keeps the corners nice and sealed. Um, there's one on this corner as well as the other corner over there. And then in the front, all there is is there's a spring in the front here, which you can see right here. So this spring actually allows this to get pulled down through. So it actually gets pulled down like that underneath the floorboard. It basically keeps the vinyl pulled nice and tight like that, wrapped right underneath the floorboard like that. So it makes a nice tight seal. And again, that is on each corner as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And then once that's done, all we got left is to do the wiring, which we've got a couple pigtails right down here. One is for the main switch panel, and the other one here is for the cab heater. And then we just gotta run our heater lines. And that's gonna be about it. All right guys, so I just went ahead and Velcroed around the ROPS, the back of the ROPS here. Um, so you can see this little Velcro strap right here. It just goes around the ROPS and it kind of pulls the side piece in and then it gets tied to this little middle section here, which is like a flap. It's got a weight on it that hangs down behind the seat. Um, so that just kind of ties all that together. Did the same thing with this side here. So you can see this Velcro strap right here gets pulled down underneath and ties this back panel to the side panel here. Um, so that's how that works, keeps it nice and enclosed. And if you guys remember in a video where I installed this rear remote kit, I had talked about whether or not it might uh, interfere with my original tractor cab or not. As you can see, it has no interference. Um, the lines come right up against the back of the cab right here. So it's completely um, out of the way of the original tractor cab, which I'm really happy about because I wasn't sure if it was going to somehow interfere with the back of the cab here. Um, and it does not. So anybody who is planning to do the rear remotes or already has rear remotes, hopefully this helps you guys to see that it has no interference with the cab at all. If you guys didn't see the rear remote kit install video, I will link that right here. Um, so you guys can see that video if you'd like to. So now that we've got the rear of the cab all buttoned up, we're gonna go ahead and work on the front vinyl here. Um, so again, we've got these little springs right here. You just gotta grab them with some vice grips and them just hook under the floorboard there. All right, so go ahead and get yourself a set of needle nose vice grips. That's how I usually do it. Go ahead and grab it right on the end here. Then you can go ahead and pull the spring down through the floorboard here. Just like that. Pull it 
nice and tight and find yourself a nice secure um, spot to hook it underneath the floorboard here. Okay, now where I usually hook that spring, you can see it right there coming down. I usually hook it right underneath the brake pedal. So that's where I've always had it. And it's worked really good there for me. So let's go ahead and get the other side done and I'll show you where I hook that side to. All right, so I just got the right side attached and you can see where I've attached it to. Pretty much the same exact spot on the floorboard there. Again, that's the spot I've always used and I've never had a problem with it there. So that's gonna be it for the vinyl. All the vinyl is together. Now we can go ahead and start working on the cab wiring, um, which is just a couple of pigtails we got over there in the bottom left corner. So let me get uh, situated here and I'll show you guys where I connect that stuff to. Okay, so for my cab wiring, as I showed you guys, I had this little pigtail here. And what I do in the spring when I remove the cab is I take the pigtail and I stuff it up inside of the bonnet here. Um, that way it's kind of out of the way and it's not gonna get uh, corroded or anything like that. It's kind of protected in here. So I'll go ahead and pull this bonnet off. And underneath the bonnet here, you can see my little pigtail right here. So this is the other end of that. So what I usually do is I just kind of push it out through the top here, right through the top, just like this. I'll hold that up and I'll put the hood bonnet back in place. So just the pigtail is sticking out. And then we can go ahead and plug in the pigtail of the cab to the main power of the tractor. All right, so now you guys can see how I've got this pigtail out. It just kind of hangs out from the hood bonnet here. That's how I always had it. Um, got the hood bonnet all secured back in place. So now we can go ahead and take the main power lead. Go ahead and plug it on into our main power for a tractor. And then we should be all set for the main power for the cab. Now the only other pigtail that's left is these two connectors right here. And this is going to get plugged in directly to my heater. And that's run on a separate fuse. That's why this is on its own um, pigtail here. So let me go ahead and grab the heater. And we'll get that mounted up next. And the heater just ends up getting zip tied right to this main side rail right here. And then the very last thing we got to do is wrap the vinyl siding kind of around these corner posts. And it just gets Velcroed to each other kind of like this. I usually wait to the very end to do that though. Just because of the cab heater and whatnot. It makes it easier for me to install it. Alright, so I've got the cab heater here. As you can see, we've got these little mounting tabs on the sides. Typically, I just use zip ties to mount these from these little brackets here right to the side rail right here so it just gets zip tied and it also allows this thing to pivot so i could actually kind of move it with my hand and have it pivot back and forth and stay in a certain location which is nice um gives it a little bit of flexibility having it zip tied um and then here's obviously our two pigtails that we need to plug in uh, for power and ground so let me grab a couple zip ties and we'll get this thing zip tied in place Now you guys can kind of see how I can allow this thing to pivot depending on where I want it. So I really like that part about using the zip ties. So, all right, now I'll go ahead and cut these. Before I do that, we'll go ahead and plug our power and ground in. Here's our ground. There's our power. Okay, so now we've got the power for the cab hooked up. We've got the power for the heater hooked up. Now the only thing really left is to install our heater hoses. So we'll do that now. Um, I just got to cut the zip ties, unwrap the hose, and I'll meet you guys up here with the hoses. We'll hook them up and uh, clamp them in place. And then we can wrap our Velcro corners here for the vinyl. Get those vinyl corners wrapped up and we should be all set. All right, guys, so I've got the heater hose unwound from where I had it up underneath the frame there. And um, I've slid it back through the cab here. As you can see, I threw a couple of big bolts in the end here. I think they're seven eighths bolts. Um, so I've got them in the ends and they clamped them and that's how I plugged them for the year and then I shut the ball valve off. So that's what I did all summer long. So now go ahead and take these clamps out, um, get these bolts out of here. But before I do, I've got these little hose pinch off pliers. Go ahead and pinch these hoses off. Just do them one at a time here. That way if there is any coolant left in these hoses, which I'm sure there is, it won't come leaking out all over the place. So I've got that one crimped. Go ahead and take out this uh, plug that I put in here and we can go ahead and slide that onto the heater and then we'll go ahead and do the next one. Okay, got that one loose. Okay, there we go. And go ahead and slide this one on there. And we'll get that reclamped. Go ahead and work on the second hose here and basically repeat the same process. All 
All right, guys, so you've got it all mounted up. You can see we've got her clamped on the bottom here for our coolant hoses. I zip tied all the wiring coming down nice and tight, and then I came across with it over here, zip tied it to the heater hoses. Um, so that is tied right there, and then it goes into our main power here. And then our power and ground for a heater itself is pinched in between these two hoses here so that it isn't dangling down or in the way. So we should be all set there. Um, now our final step to do here is to pull this uh, vinyl back over. Um, the other side is already done because I never had to uh, actually remove that vinyl. I only had to remove this side to get my heater out in the spring. So I just got to pull this back around, basically re-Velcro this just like so. So let me get this pulled back around and Velcroed and uh, I'll show you guys the final product. Okay guys, well we've got the cap fully assembled now. The only thing I'm missing are the doors, which you guys have seen me put them on, you know, tons of times before. Basically just dropping doors in these two little pins right here. Two pins, one here, one here, you drop the door in and you go ahead and just close it. So um, I'm leaving the doors off for now just because it's still a little warm yet to keep the doors on there. And if I put them on for this video, I'm just gonna be taking them off again. But the rest of the cab is 100% complete. Um, lots of spider webs in here and spiders. Lots of webs up in here. So I gotta definitely dust on the inside of it. And the outside, as you can see here, but there's quite a bit of spider webs around the lights and whatnot. So I'm gonna wash this off with the hose probably tomorrow and get this thing shined up again and ready for winter. Get the interior cleaned up a little bit and uh, we should be all set to go. Um, one last thing, we gotta check for power. Make sure everything is good still. Got the key on here. Uh -huh. That's from my blower. So that's working. I can't remember what all these switches do. That one there is for my front lights. Make sure they're both working. Okay, good there. And the third switch, that is for my strobe light. And that's working, so that's good. And we've got the wiper motor. So we're good there. So we should be all set, guys. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's been a while since you guys seen me. Like I said, this weather really freaking sucks. Uh, a lot of rain lately, and um, it's just been an absolute swamp out there. Um, cannot get back there at all. If I go on my property, I'm gonna leave massive ruts. Um, so it's just not happening, but I'm hoping in the next maybe week or two, I can get back there and get some tractor footage for you guys. Um, either me working with my tractor or something else. As I said, I do have a video planned with my Kubota BX and my father's John Deere. I think you guys are really gonna like that video. So stay tuned for that. I did also get my computer fixed. Um, had a bad CPU. Um, so that's another reason I've been missing for the last couple weeks is my CPU went bad on my computer. So I wasn't able to edit even if I did make a video. So between the rain and my computer being down, I really haven't been able to make any videos. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little short video of me installing my cab. Um, hopefully it helps somebody out installing their original tractor cab for the first time this year. And um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.